There he is. Hi, Andrew. How are you doing? Good, Cameron. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Very well. What's the, what's the time there? Eight o'clock? Uh, yeah, it's 8 p.m. Okay. Good stuff. All right, Cameron, I've just got to do some formalities quickly because uh, we put this into a podcast and then uh, and we put it on YouTube and everything. So just to bookend it. Uh, my name's Andrew McKenna. I'm the founder of the African Turf Academy. I started a series in uh, lockdown um, in South Africa, which is now going on but far too long. But um, just to showcase the different opportunities in the turf and, and golf industry. Uh, today, we've got Cameron Campbell, who's uh, uh, from St. Andrews in Scotland, but in, uh, in Australia, pursuing his golfing career. So we're going to hear about his journey um, through his short uh, career. So Cameron, uh, before, I, before we start, I'm going to kick off with a couple of simple questions. Uh, the, open yeah. or the, master, the Open or the Masters? It has to be the Open. Okay. Uh, Jack or Tiger? Has to be Jack. I okay. don't think anyone's going to beat his record. Okay. And um, rugby or football? Rugby. Rugby. Okay. All right. So um, tell us a little bit about you, how you got into golf. Uh, and and I'm gonna, I know you're, you're uncertain about your future, where you want to end up, but uh, tell us about your... Uh, your, your, how you got into into the game and where your career is at now? Yeah, so um, I suppose quite a long story. Uh, got brought up on a golf course. Uh, well, very close to a golf course. Um, oh, sorry, I've uh, turned around there. <laughs> uh, my dad was uh, director of estates at the golf course. Um, so yeah, that was I got brought up all the way to the age of nine. Um, there, down in Cheshire, in England. Um, a Devere resort called Carden Park, a 36-hole, uh, um, one of them being a Nicholas Design golf course. Um, and then at the age of nine, we moved up to Scotland, um, where my dad was director of estate and operations, I think, um, at the Dukes Golf Club. Um, so we were there for almost two years. Um, we then got offered the opportunity to move to Ireland. Um, so we went over to Ireland, age 11. He opened the golf resort there, and then we moved back to Scotland when I was 13. Um, and it probably wasn't until I moved back from Ireland that I really got into golf. Um, okay. I would say before then, I was quite interested in other things, football and roller hockey and swimming and all mm. sorts. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't probably until I moved back to St. Andrews. Uh, St. Andrews is a pretty good junior program um, that's set up. Um, all the way through sort of primary school going into secondary school. Um, I think actually up until your age of 18, they've got a good junior program, competitions, coaching, and so on. Um, mm. So, yeah. Okay. So, quite a, All right. quite did a long... You, did you play any international golf when you were young? Did you get into the uh, Yeah, so I, I, I didn't care. I, play, I was in all the uh, sort of academy setups and so on um, well, until I was about 17. Um and then I decided sort of golf wasn't the avenue that I wanted to take. Actually, it was probably a little bit older. I was probably 18. Um, and, and that's when I decided that it wasn't what I kind of wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, I came out to South Africa um, first time in 2013. Um, mm -hmm. Came out for quite a while there. Um, got some good practice in during the winter months. Um, stayed, with us, stayed, stayed with us at Silver Lakes. Yeah, came to Silver Lakes and stayed with you guys in Pretoria. Um, obviously, that was a great experience. Kind of, I've been away before, but get that was kind of the furthest I've been away. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it was a great experience for me out there, uh, playing in that sort of heat and understanding how different grasses and so on um, can affect the game pretty much and how mm -hmm. you play um, altitude. Obviously, you're pretty high up there in, in Pretoria mm -hmm. and playing at 36, 37 degree heat as well obviously has an impact on on golf yeah, so. it's not it's not like that today it's about uh 10 degrees today winter, <laughs> winter's arrived in south africa today it's getting a bit like that here in byron bay to be honest it's getting a little bit chilly okay where is byron bay is that in sydney and uh, no so we're about eight hours north of sydney um okay. almost on the queensland border uh, okay so still in new okay. south wales but close okay all right, all right, and then uh, and then when did you when did you consider the the, the golf course management side? 
Because I know uh, you joined Wendy's program with the RNA scholarship. Yeah, so when I decided that golf wasn't really the avenue that I wanted to take um, and kind of thought that I wasn't going to be good enough to make it, um, or prob I probably didn't try hard enough, to be honest. That's probably the, the, the way it went. But um, yeah, I went to work for Mercedes okay. um, to, com to completely take my mind off it. Um, yeah. as a, I, I worked there as a product specialist and it did take my mind off it. But after a while, I did start missing it. And I was, I was thinking of different ways to get back into it. Had a chat okay. with dad and we thought the best option was to go and study. So study and golf is dad, management. And is, is dad listening? Is he here? I know your mom's on, but I don't know if you're uh, I bet they're listening. He's got some funky, listening. Listening. He's got some funky uh, I saw he's got some funky uh, Instagram name. Yeah, probably. Yeah, he doesn't know how, he doesn't have a clue how to work it. I, I bet. But, um, right. Yeah, so I went to work for Mercedes, and after a while, again, started missing it. So, um, yeah, decided golf management was the was the avenue I wanted to take. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of how it started. And then um, I was out in San Antonio for the golf industry show. Um, I didn't really know what I was going to be doing the summer of twenty eighteen. Um, so we were out there and I was out talking to a few people and one of my dad, uh, dad's good friends, uh, Lee Strutt, um, mm -hmm. who was the um, course manager, course superintendent at uh, RAC Club down in London, in mm -hmm. down near London. Now mm -hmm. is over at Le Bois in France, a uh, new okay. project over there. Um, he, we were having a discussion one day and he decided that um, it would be a good opportunity for me to go out to Slovenia. Uh, never heard of Slovenia before. It was completely new to me. Um, and one of his yeah, good friends... That's royal, royal Bled, right? Royal Bled, yeah. It's about an hour from Ljubljana, which is the capital of Slovenia. Um, it's, okay. it's right beside Lake Bled, which is a pretty popular backpacker tourist destination. And it's Howard um, Swan, Swan redesigned golf course, right? So, yeah, he redesigned the golf course. The golf course was originally built um, in 1937, just before 1937. And um, it was designed by an unknown uh, Hungarian engineer. Uh, the yeah. golf course was laid out by um, before the war and then completely left um, and then re, re sort of vamped in the 70s and then redesigned again by Howard Swan in 2017. So it was just kind of uh, redesigned before I got there. So um, Steve was doing the sort of growing, uh, just past the growing procedure, uh, you could say of that. Um, okay. And then, yeah, so he was part of that. That's when, I I was, that's when I last saw you when you were just finishing up there. It was at the Open at Carnoustie. Yeah, was that it? was at the Open. So I flew back. And that was actually with the RNA scholarship program. Um, okay. I came came back with them um, and did yeah a week at the Open, going around all the media and inside the ropes, and did some of the stuff with that, which is obviously a great experience. And that's one of the opportunities that the RNA scholarship has to offer, um, mm -hmm. along with many other things. Okay, and now, now you found yourself in Australia. Uh, what, what what took you out there? Um, so last summer, obviously after graduate and so on, I, I was. Coming and hiring what to do was to go traveling for a few months around Asia and do the sort of usual backpacker thing um, or yeah try and find a job um, so I thought why not try and do a bit of both um, which is when Australia came about and it was actually through Lee Strutt that I then got out here and um, he knew the assistant superintendent of the Lakes Golf Club uh, which is in Sydney, where they held the Aussie Open a few times, um, the last being, I think, in 2018. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of how I ended up out here. And I only planned to be out here for six months. Um, and I was going to be home for a couple of days, and I was going straight out to America to do the Ohio State University program. Um, yeah. So I was going out there. I was going to be starting at a golf club called Chevy Chase, which is in Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, and probably about a month into being in Australia, which a lot of people told me this would happen, um, is that I would love Australia and I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to go anywhere. And that's that's what happened. Um, so I've obviously, emailed Michael Keith and I said, Mike, right now it's not the right time for me to do the program. And um, you only get one year visa in Australia, 
uh, wants. So it's obviously an opportunity that I feel like I should take mm. um, and use the whole year. Even if I only work on a golf course for six months, I can then travel the other six months, which is what I wanted to do anyway. Okay. Um, so Mike was happy with that. He said, listen, known you for a, quite a long time now. I understand if, if that's what you want to do. I've got no, nothing against you doing that. You can always come mm. back to the program. You got until mm. you're about 30 um, to do the program, then it gets a little bit sticky with the visa situations in the states. Um, so yeah, yeah, we, we, we've had we've had both Mike and Wendy on on a, a, our little program here. So uh, yeah, I know Wendy's watching. Mike tends to pop in yeah. from time to time. All right, so you, and then, and then you've experienced the, um, the the turbulent weather of Australia and all the different challenges that that brings, right? So the fires and the floods and the, um, yeah, and the lack of water and all the all the creepy crawlies. Yeah, so first came the fires, and they came in probably around late November. Um, we started getting them really bad. Uh, it was about 38, 39 degrees. You couldn't, visibility started to get bad. You started to get ash falling on the greens. Then after that, we started to get a drought uh, quite badly. Um, we were going a, a normal summer's day in Australia. We were, and on the lakes, we were probably using about 1.5 megalitres a day, I would say, to water the golf course. We then, when all this happened, we went into the drought, the lakes that we used, because um, we didn't have a borehole like the Australian Golf Club Bonnie Doon, um, East Lakes next door. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we actually got our water from a big um, park uh, almost in the center of Sydney called Centennial Park. The water mm -hmm. came down, filled our lakes up, and then we, we filtered the water and used it through there. Um, so a million litres, right? It's a million litres, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. What, yeah, 1.5 megalitres, yeah. 1.5 uh, millilitres a day, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. and then, and then we went, um, we, we stopped watering tees, fairways, approaches, and just started watering the greens and that's mm -hmm. it. Um, so it got pretty scary at one point. We we're probably down to almost about two or three weeks left of water before we had to completely, that was it. Um, so yeah, I think the, the super Anthony Mills was getting a little bit, a little bit heated at that point. That would have been a pretty scary moment for him. Um, but yeah. Is but I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if you watched on Monday, but I had um, uh, Luke Luke Partridge on, who's the course yeah, of the man manly, Manly. And he's seen yeah, yeah. having a, a lot of rain now. Yeah, we are. And actually, in, in about January time, uh, late January, start of February, it might have even been later than that, we actually got um, a lot of floodings. Um, so just before the floods came, we got an excavator in and we, we dagged out, uh, dug down into the lakes and um, sort of lifted the pipes up so there was no silt getting in the pipes uh, for irrigation. And then we got about 370 mil in just over three days. Mm, that's, so, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, then it came down and we shut the golf course. Uh, the golf course had to be shut because then there was too much water lying. Luckily, it's a sand-based golf course, um, so the, it, it does drain pretty well, um, which isn't too bad. All right, good. So now, um, in your career, uh, apart from your dad, have you have you had any mentors that um, you, you rely on? Yeah, I, I would say Lee Strutt would be pretty high up there just because he's helped me with the, the jobs that I've had. And I know if I called Lee, he'd be able to help me with mm -hmm. almost anything. Um, and his wife, Sammy, we've known Sammy for a very long time, for a bigger um so yeah she's like a second mom to me as well so yeah probably lee um is is probably you, a mentor that i would say and it's very important as well to have a mentor yeah uh, but your dad is probably your your main man eh? or your mom yeah yeah mom probably yeah but yeah dad's pretty good i mean if there was ever a question that i needed to ask dad would would pretty much know he's been been around in the industry for quite a long yeah. time so yeah, I saw him briefly at B uh, BTMI this year, but he was always too busy for me to talk to him, or he was too busy to talk to me, maybe. And he gave, yeah, me, that's... Uh, he, he gave me an email afterwards to say, why didn't you stop? And I was like, well, you're, you're, you're too busy. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be it. He thought owning your own business, you might have a little bit more time, but I don't think that's the way at all. Okay, and these so... exhibitions, do you, you've been to the... Uh, um, uh, 
uh, the G, uh, what's it called, GIS, the GIS yeah. America, and the yeah. and, B, and BTME. Yeah. So obviously, I used to go when when I was a kid um, with the parents. Um, I used to run around, probably annoying people. And now it's more on a professional basis. But um, yeah, BTME, GIS, went to San Antonio in 2018 um, and been to BM, BTME the last few years. Didn't get to go this year, which is unfortunate, obviously, because being out here, it's a bit, bit too far to travel bit back. Oh, yeah. Well, I did it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it would have been nice because I had an it's award pricey. actually to, yeah, had an award to collect this year as well, which would have been nice to pick up. But Mm. Uh, Dad picked that one up for me, so it was all good. Okay. All right. One of the one of the reasons for the guys uh, why uh, cameras on today is because he's still unsure about which direction he's going to go in in the golf industry. And, and one of the one of the ideas of this program was to show how many options there are. Even though we we have a turf uh, academy down here in South Africa, uh, it doesn't mean that the guys necessarily have to end up as a as a as a golf course manager. There's lots of different options. So I'd like to ask Cameron, what uh, options does he have in the industry that you'd like to pursue? What are the options for you? And what, um, what are you considering? Uh yeah, so I would say when I get back from my travels, I don't know when that'll be or where I'm going to settle yet. Um, I'd love to stay in Australia. Um, but it would be going down the more operations, events, uh, club management side of things so more like how everything works rather than being in the greenkeeping side don't get me wrong I've loved the greenkeeping side and I'll continue to do that until I find exactly what I want to do uh, mm -hmm. you can travel the world from greenkeeping I think it's a fantastic um, mm -hmm. job to get into um, and there's so many opportunities it's such a small industry as well everyone knows everybody but mm -hmm. yeah I think the director of golf club management operation side is where I want to end up I'd say um, all right and, and, yeah. and have you have you got a, uh, a destination you're not sure yet of where you want to be is one of one of my next little questions for you. just just to keep interrupting but um, if anyone wants to ask Cameron anything far away uh, I've got I've got some uh, questions for you, but one of my short questions later was uh, Australia or Scotland. It has to be Australia right now. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty special out here. Why is that? Um, just the weather. Um, the weather. The people are friendly. Um, yeah, I just over here. Just the lifestyle, and you're not that far away. I mean, FaceTime's so good nowadays. If I need anything call mom and dad you know it's only a phone call away so and they came they came out here they came out here at christmas for three weeks uh over christmas and new year and they loved yeah. it too they they could understand why i don't want to go home yeah and what is it what is the lockdown uh situation there um it's okay now um it, we're going into stage one i think of the relaxing the measures um so yeah they've done pretty well uh, I think they've only had 102 deaths. Obviously, not not a good situation, but I think as well as it could have gone, they closed the borders pretty early on. Um, New Zealand's done very well as well. Um, but yeah, they're relaxing the borders now. They actually only stopped golf for about one one or two days here. Um, they did have measures in place. I mean, I was just finishing up at the lakes um, when it all started, and we went to three days a week, 12 hour days. So there'll be two teams and the other guys work Tuesday, Thursday, um, Sunday, and we worked Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So uh, sorry, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and we worked Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and it seemed to work pretty well. Um, I mean, there was loads of things that I did in the golf course, remove the rakes, um, no ball washers, stuff like that. Um, and it seemed to help. Um, mm -hmm. The members respected it. Um, so I think that's that worked out very well. Yeah, we are in day sixty-two of our our lockdown. Golf has been closed now for sixty-two days, so it's quite hectic, and we're we're, we're now not even any nearer getting getting let out um, than where we are. So we're in a we're in a fun, awkward situation. And I don't I don't think it's a great I don't think it was great them stopping golf as well. Um, golf's great. You know, you, on an average 18 holes, you're walking about five and a half, six miles. Mm. Great for your men mental health, being out there in the fresh air. 
So I don't think them closing golf courses was the right idea, in my opinion, but it's mm. like, uh, not All right, so when you, when you talk about the event side of the industry, what, what, what do you mean by that? Is that golf days, or what, what, what are you referring to there? More events as in golf tournaments. Um, okay. So the operations of golf tournaments, you know, the behind-the-scenes stuff of golf tournaments. That's more what I would, what I would like to do. Um, like when, on, on one of the tours? Yeah, whether that be with IMG, um, they obviously run a lot with um, the European Tour, um, whether it's down that side or it is with the European Tour itself. I did do something with the European Tour and IMG um, at the Dunhill in 2018. Um, it was European Tour production, so it's part of the TV crew, um, which I enjoyed. I did really enjoy that. It was pretty cool to see like what happens behind the scenes and obviously the infrastructure and so on that goes into a golf event, even somewhere, something like the Dunhill, a tournament like the Dunhill, which isn't a massive event, um, pretty big money-wise, but not, not on a scale of some of the events in Dubai and so on. Um, mm. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, not, I probably wouldn't go down that avenue. Um, it would probably be more about how the tournament's actually run itself um, mm. from, from that side. Okay. And what are the other options? The other options are... Coaching? Not coaching now. Um, my days probably of, of that are done, I'd say. Um, okay. I probably would have needed to go more down the PGA route if I was doing that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's, so it's got, the, the turf side of things allows you to become involved in the turf, in the golf operations as well. Uh, yeah. Many of, the, many of the club managers around don't have a good turf background, which I think is important to have. Um, yeah. So you, you're coming from a good position if you've got a turf background and a playing background. Yeah, and it's it's you, it's not often found that you get many guys going from working on the golf course to then moving into the club management side. Um, mm. It's it's now maybe coming a little bit more popular, but mm. probably five to ten years ago it was it probably wasn't even heard of. Um, so no. yeah. Okay. And what advice would you give uh, the young guys? entering the industry now um to be honest i don't think there's a better time to be honest um i think that the generation my dad's generation of superintendents are now going out of the industry um uh, moving on um so i feel in the next few years is a, is a really good good chance to get in and move your way up the ladder quite quickly um and also golf's becoming a lot more sustainable now Obviously, Wendy and Steve Isaac and so on in the RNA are doing great jobs um, in Asia and over this side as well in trying to get environmentalists and superintendents working together. You know, 10 years ago, that was unheard of. You wouldn't, they, they hated each other. But golf's becoming a lot more sustainable now um, in, that, in that regard anyway. Sustainable in which way? Um, environmentally? That, you, yeah, environmentally, yeah, for sure, okay. yeah. Yeah, right. and, the, and also for guys getting into the industry, opportunity to travel. Um, you know, it's so easy because it's such a small industry. You make a contact, with, let's say BTME or GIS, and you get their contact details. And if you do want to go somewhere, it's pretty, pretty likely that that person would know somewhere to go in the world, you know, for you to work. Okay, so what's your next step then? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like your dad now. What, what are you, okay. What are you, what are you going to do? Um, so my plan was to go um, from the lakes um, up to a golf course called Elliston. Probably not, probably not heard of it. It's the other side of the Barrington Tops, northwest of Sydney, about five hours northwest. And um, it's owned by the Packer family, which own a lot of media and so on in Australia. Very, very wealthy family. Um, and it was a, it's a Norman design golf course. Um, mm -hmm. And very, very private. You can't, it's not a pay and play. It's owned by the Packer mm -hmm. family. So they have their friends come in and that's, that's the way it goes. So that was the plan. Okay. Um, they, they had to shut their doors uh, due, to, due to COVID um, just because they didn't want anyone entering the resort. They wanted to keep it completely shut just in case the Packer family did turn up. And okay. obviously if, if, if one of them got it, then it would be a, a media frenzy. Um, so then came up to Byron Bay to kind of get away from it all um, whilst trying to find farm work. I'm trying to get my second year visa. 
Um, and you need 88 days of regional work to get that, um, which Elliston counted as that because it was in a regional area. Um, so, yeah, we, we've been stuck in Byron now for seven weeks. Um, it's not the worst place to be stuck in the world, but obviously when you've not got a job, um, it's, it's not great. Um, so, yeah, we're just trying to find regional work now, and if we can't get that, we'll go over to New Zealand. Um, I can get some contacts for golf courses there fairly easy, I think. So um, head over there, and there's plenty of go good golf courses over there, Cape Kidnappers, Tahiti. All those golf courses over there, great courses. So, so. so for a British passport holder, getting into Australia isn't that easy? Um, it's, it's fairly easy to get your first year visa. If you're in between the age of 18 and 30, you get a one-year visa. Um, mm. To get your second year, you do need to get that 88 days. Um, and to get sponsored, it's fairly difficult as well. So, what, is the 88 yeah. days, what does the 88 days mean? Um, so you need to work on either a farm or in a regional place for 88 days. On a farm? A farm or, um, yeah, in a regional regional area. To, so it's like you're giving back to the country so then they can give you your second year visa is the way it works. Uh, uh, okay. So you, so you it's work, fr work free of charge? No, no, it's, it's usually paid. Um, but right now, obviously, everyone's trying to find that farm work because they can't their job in the city or whatever has been, been lost. So everyone's trying to get out to those rural communities now to, to get farm work, which is proven difficult for All right, for so one of, your, one of your buddies earlier said, don't you fancy coming back to the castle, Chris Dixon? Yeah, uh, Chris is a, a senior greenkeeper at the castle course there in St Andrews. So I worked at the castle last summer um, under John Wood. Um, I did some volunteer work there when I was still studying. Um, they were doing a new putting green up beside the first tee. So I went up and helped a couple of days a week up there. And John came to me and, and offered me a job um, mm -hmm. for the summer um, mm -hmm. whilst I was kind of deciding what I wanted to do, uh, which was a great opportunity. To, you'll learn probably more in St. Andrews than you probably would anywhere else in the world. Um, and uh, under a guy like John Wood as well. That, that's the thing that I think that's very important for young guys coming into the industry is who they actually work for. You know, I've worked mm. for three superintendents now, which are very, very well known in the industry. And I feel like that's beneficial, um, especially yeah. in terms of references going on to other places. If they write you a reference um, and it's coming from a, a fairly well known name, then it, it does help, I'd say. Mm, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, one of the one of the uh, outcomes of these interview series it wasn't really the intention, but it's the network that was built up for uh, for the academy and therefore the students. Uh, yeah. It's been it's been amazing. I mean, next week um, because I I wanted to get uh, you and then Justin Harrison on is also. Uh, uh, Do you know Justin? I never met Justin. No, uh, yeah, I think so he's he's gone. Yeah, I think he's done the Ohio. State program, I think, as well. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Justin, uh, Justin did uh, Robert Trent Jones golf course in Virginia, and then he went to the U.S. Open at Shinnecock, and then he went down to uh, uh, Sawgrass, did the Players Championship, and he's now at the top course in Cape Town. But anyway, he's coming yeah. on tomorrow. But in between, so it's good to give you guys some exposure. But next week, I've got uh, some of the top guys I would say in the world. I mean, Alejandro Reyes is coming on. Um, Yep. Vent, who's the course superintendent at Congressional Country Clubs coming on. Uh, yep. Darren, Darren, the head groundsman for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, and um, uh, Carmen Magro. Carmen Magro, you all know. Right, who's, okay. Yeah. Who's po the Pogo man. So it's good, yeah. to go, good to get create these networks so that you guys can uh, keep your options open all the time. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. And through the turf industry, you can also get into football. So those footballers who are keen on the, I mean, Robert, there's a guy in our program now who's the South African Lawn Bowls champion who wants to look after those, uh, those types of surfaces. So uh, never mind golf, there's also other sports too. Yeah, there's so many different options in this industry, that's for sure. Um, you don't need to be set in one, one side of it, that's, that's yeah. for sure. All right, Cameron, um, the guy, if the guys want to contact you, what's your uh, Twitter stuff and your, uh, your social media if they want to get some from you? Yeah, so probably Twitter mainly for um, this kind of stuff, but it's um, at CJ Campbell underscore 12. So, 
And, that's and, you're, and, and yeah. this one is Cam, Cam yeah. Campbell at ni- 1996. I guess that's your birthday. No, it? Uh, CJ Campbell underscore 96. Yeah. Mm. This is okay. more of a personal account now, so you uh, won't get many ter- turf things on here, I don't think. Maybe a lot okay. of sunset, sunsets, but... Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, Cameron, good to chat to you again. Uh, yeah, no well, worries. Ho- hopefully you get a job soon and uh, you carry on your career. Let's keep in Thank touch you very with you. much. All right, Cameron. Yeah. Cheers, Andrew. Right. Take care. Thanks, Nick. Cheers, Nick. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.